Our scripture is from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 to 4. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you, that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Now, it seems like it's directed at the kids, right? Kind of, it is. But verse 4, which I think is the interesting part, Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in training and instruction of the Lord. I see this as being the foundation for the first three verses. That if you want your children to do the first part, you need to be doing the second part, which is verse 4. I'd like to quote Billy Graham. Children will invariably talk, eat, walk, think, respond, and act like their parents. Give them a target to shoot at. Give them a goal to work toward. Give them a pattern that they can see clearly. And you give them something that gold and silver cannot buy. Now, I've already had my chance of being a dad. And like most parents, my kids were getting older and it came time to leave the house. I thought, my job is done. Now, every grandparent in here is going to. <laughs> And then something happened on September 12, 2009, and something else happened on April the 12th, 2012. And that is, I became a grandpa to Ashlyn and a grandpa to Payson. So now, I kind of feel like I have a second chance. Now, I did like everybody wants to do, the best job I thought I could at being a dad. You know? But I'd like to kind of take today, and as the sermon title says, look back over my shoulder at some of the things I did right and wrong, and see how I want to approach things as a grandpa. Kind of look at it as a second chance, okay? One of the first things I always felt was important, and I still do, and I want to tell you that if you're a parent or a grandparent, is kids need time with us. Time spent with parents, with grandma and grandpa. Here's some sad statistics. Every eight seconds of every school day in the United States of America, a teen drops out of school. Every 26 seconds, a teen runs away from home. Every seven minutes, a teen is arrested for a drug offense. A drug offense. There's a very common theme among all these kids, and that is an absentee father either physically, or emotionally, or mentally, or all three. Paul tells us in Ephesians, bring up our children in the training and instruction of the Lord. In order to do that, you've got to be engaged. You don't do it vicariously. They don't inherit it from us. It's going to take an investment of time. And even if you think you're doing pretty good at that, there are times when you still goof up. I made a mistake when Aaron was in second grade that I have regretted for 26 years. I, uh, he was in school. Mary was home with Johnson and Mary Beth. And uh, I was out on my motorcycle doing pastoral visits. And normally, I always told Mary every place that I was going to be. I, I do that still. For whatever reason, this day, I did not. And, what, and when I was done with uh, visiting the folks that I needed to see, I took a ride over what's called Clearfield Mountain in New Boys, PA. That's where we were living at the time. I took a ride over Clearfield Mountain to Clearfield. There was a friend of mine there by the name of Gary Hopp, who was a pastor there. He was uh, in his first church. Uh, I was on my second church. He was single. We used to get together occasionally, you know, sometimes he'd come to our house so he could get a decent meal uh, from Mary. But anyway, I just took off over Clearfield Mountain on my motorcycle, went over and spent a couple hours with Gary. And uh, I came home, and uh, uh, Aaron was home from school, and I hadn't told Mary where I was. And she said to me, where were you all afternoon? Mr. Jokester. 
I went to see my girlfriend. What I did not know was at that, on that day, Aaron had found out at school that the parents of two of his friends were getting a divorce. We had kind of a back room in the house we lived in there. We called it the mud room. And he ran into that room and slammed the door and locked it and started to cry. And was very, very mad at me. And, of course, I got the look from Mary. She knew I was joking. But it took me a while to convince Aaron to open that door, <laughs> to convince him that I was joking, I did not have a girlfriend, I went to see Gary, who he knew, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So even when we think we're doing the best we can, slightest little word can cause our children distress and pain even when we don't meet. Like I said, 26 years. I still regret that stupid thing that I said. So just like I am never was and still not the perfect dad, I know I'm not the perfect grandpa. However, I found an example in the Bible of a pretty good grandpa, and that's where I'd like to look today. Uh, I'm not going to read from Genesis 48. I'm going to tell you what's in there. Feel free to open your Bible and look at it. But what this is, is the story of Israel... Jacob, blessing his two grandsons, Ephraim and Manasseh, who were Joseph's sons, okay? So we got uh, Ephraim and Manasseh, their dad is Joseph, his dad is Jacob, okay? Now, this is the Joseph that grew up in Egypt, all right? He became the second in command only to Pharaoh, and these two grandsons probably didn't get to see Jacob too much because they're spending most of their time in Egypt with their grandpa Potiphar who was a priest in the Egyptian religion and he was very wealthy. So this would have been the grandpa that says I'll pay for the hockey, I'll pay for the football, I'll pay whatever, you, I'll pay for the dance lessons. I'll, no, they probably weren't taking dance lessons. But I'll, you know, whatever. This is the grandpa with the money who's lavishing all kinds of stuff on him. They hardly ever get to see Jacob. Okay? When it comes to religious instruction they would have been very influenced by the Egyptian religion, okay? But Jacob gave his grandsons four very important things that I would like to copy my life after, and if you're a grandparent, I want to suggest you do the same thing. First of all, he shared his testimony with his grandsons from Genesis chapter 28. He told them how he was called to serve God. He told them how he promised that he would serve God, and he would give them a tenth of whatever his increase was. So let me ask you a question. If your grandchildren are old enough to hear it yet, have you shared your testimony with them? And here's another question. If you're not even close to being a grandparent yet, would you take a minute and think ahead when I do become a grandparent and they ask me about my life right now, am I living so that I have something that I don't mind sharing with them and I won't be ashamed to share with them? Secondly, Jacob told his grandsons that who he knew God to be, God's name, which was God Almighty, it was very different from the Egyptian god, Re. Do you tell your grandchildren about Jesus? You have a golden opportunity to do so. To tell them how special his name is to you. Thirdly, he told the boys the fourfold promise of God on their family. Now, if you've been blessed, and most of us have, they all of us have in some way. Have you shared that with your grandchildren? The blessings that you've had in your life. Give your grandchildren the opportunity to thank God for the way he has blessed you, blessed their parents, and they can expect and hope for him to bless them. Then he also made sure he told them about their grandmother Rachel. He honored her. He honored her walk of faith. He let them know that grandma and grandpa together were serving the Lord. And then, after that, he did four special things for them. Now, first of all, you've got to know that his grandchildren were only half Hebrew. But he accepted them as part of the family. He went so far as to legally adopt them so that they would be in line for the family inheritance. Make sure your grandchildren know that however they got into the world, 
that you love them and they are part of your family. Now, I had an experience because I came into the world in an unapproved way, and I've told you about this before. My parents got married in November. I was born in January the following year. My grandparents on my mother, especially my grandma, my grandpa on my, on my mother's side was an alcoholic. He used to give me, he was a barber, he used to give me my haircuts for free. It wasn't bad as long as you were happy with the kind of haircut he wanted you to have. <laughs> You see old pictures of me. I have long hair. I was not going to my grandpa's barber at that time. <laughs> All right, but my dad's parents. I, or let me go back to my mother's mother. My grandma. She used to make me my own pies. Small cherry pies. Okay. Um, but my dad's parents, because of the way I came to the world, this is what this is this is what hurts in a way. But I'm not going to judge them. They were the Christians. They were the members of the Free Methodist Church in Elwood City. And because of the way I came into the world, even though it was their son, <laughs> they just kind of shunned me. Listen, it doesn't matter how your grandchildren get into the world. They deserve our love. Right? That's right. Okay. All right. These kids were only half Hebrew. But Jacob accepted them as part of the family and, put them, and adopted them and put them in line for the inheritance, okay? Make sure your grandchildren are not simply an extension of the family, just, you know, by name only. Take them in. Help them. Like I said, it doesn't matter how they get into the world. Proverbs 13.22 says this, A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Now, right away, we go to the financial, right? You know there are some things far more valuable than money. You know that. One is a good name. But you might have some personal keepsakes or things like that that have been in your family for a while to make sure that your, that your grandchildren get. Uh, when my mother knew that you know, things weren't looking good for her, she started, she sat down with me and she said, listen, I want so-and-so to have this, so-and-so to have this. They weren't valuable things. But valuable in the sense that they belong to my mother and now her grandchildren and her children have certain things. A good man leaves an inheritance for his grandchildren. One of the things that he also did was he hugged and kissed his grandchildren. I'm glad I grew up with an affectionate father because it made it easy for me to be affectionate not only to my children but also my grandchildren. I never ever see my grandchildren without if I can catch them <laughs> without giving them a hug and a kiss in the first 10 seconds. And believe me little pace is getting harder to catch. <laughs> and he loves to run away. Be affectionate with them. Proverbs 17, 6. Children's children are the crown of old men, and the glory of children are their fathers. He put his hands on them. In our hands, as grandparents, is the power and strength that's been our life, and we can pass that on. What better way to see your power and strength in the Lord passed on than to put your hands on your grandchildren and bless them? And let me point out to this. Let me point this out to you. You don't have to be ordained to bless somebody. Put your hands on your grandchildren. Pray for them. When Mary and I have the opportunity to babysit, we always have a time when we pray with and for Payson and Payson. Payson doesn't know what's going on. I don't care. We pray for them every time we're with them, every time we have the opportunity. Now, you might say, what do I say? Well, I'm going to suggest the, the uh, ironic blessing. It's found in Numbers 6, 24 to 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you 
and give you peace. The most important thing Grandpa Jacob gave his grandson was his example. Strive to be an example to your grandchildren, even if you aren't a grandparent yet. Live the way God wants you to live so that someday you'll be able to say, I went through this and this is how I handled it. Now, what I wanted to do today is, uh, first of all, I'd like all grandparents to stand up. Would you do that? Your grandparents? Stand up. If your grand, if you got grandchildren here, get them close to you. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Let's pray. Repeat after me if you're a grandma or grandpa, whether your grandchildren are here or not. Lord, I thank you for the blessing of being a grandparent. I pray for myself that I would be an example to my grandchildren. And I pray for my grandchildren that you would keep them from harm, you would keep them from deep sin, and they would come to know you as their personal savior at a young age. 